There have been so many amazing guitar riffs in the past 50 years that it's hard to know where to start when you begin playing guitar. That's why I'm going to show you the most essential ones you should start learning today to hone your act skills. <laughs> There's a principal guitar tab, as well as the drum backing tracks in the description of this video. Go download them and use them to practice along with these killer guitar riffs. Stick around because I'll be going through each decade from the 70s until now, listing two of the best riffs from each one. You won't believe what I picked for the 2000s. Let's get, let's get into it. All right, so this first riff technically isn't from the 70s, it's from 1969, but who's keeping track? A lot of people would be very disappointed in me if I didn't include this riff. This is Whole Lot of Love by Led Zeppelin. Jimmy Page recorded this iconic guitar riff through a 1958 Les Paul standard. This loose blues riff was recorded through a 100 watt Marshall Plexi head amp with distortion from EL34 tubes. In 2014, a BBC Radio 2 listeners poll actually named it the greatest guitar riff of all time. All time! This riff isn't shy about its blues influence and it provides a great foundation to learning more complex guitar riffs. It's at a medium tempo, so it's not too difficult to start playing. <clears throat> All right, number two, you'll recognize this one. Jimi Hendrix wrote Purple Haze on December 26, 1966, backstage in a club in London. He said the lyrics were inspired by a dream where he could walk underwater. I think anyone can walk underwater as long as you have some weighted shoes or something. Stay away from the mob. The second part of this riff uses one of the most important chords for beginning guitarists. This is called the Hendrix chord, which is a dominant seven sharp nine. You'll find this chord in tons of rock and jazz music. All right, next up, the 80s. Hop on the train. The insane train. Crazy Train was the first single off of the debut solo album from the Prince of Darkness himself, Ozzy Osbourne. This album, Blizzard of Oz, was released in 1980. This riff is perfect to start working between your down and alternate pickup. So you have down, and then alternate. It's at a medium up tempo, so it works really well to get your chops warmed up. Top five, take one. This next riff comes from one of the best selling albums in music history. This riff is off the title track of ACDC's seventh studio album, Back in Black. This riff sets the stage with its opening riff consisting of huge sounding chords and a badass lick. This riff is terrific if you're just learning how to switch between chords, and it's really great to just slow it down, so then you can go. And then you have time to switch between moving your fingers, and then you won't get discouraged right away, and then when you're ready, you speed it back up. And next, one of the best guitar riffs to ever pierce our ears. No! No Wonderwall. Uh, what about Smoke on the Water? Uh, come on. Cut. All right, into the 90s. This song was released in 91, and it's known for its mellow, clean intro, but I'm gonna get right into the dirt because it's tons of fun. Enter Sandman evolved from a riff that Kirk Hammett wrote after being inspired by Soundgarden's 1989 album, Louder Than Love. This is a fun riff to play because you can start clean and then smash your distortion pedal and really crank it out. At a medium tempo, it's approachable for beginners. Released in the same year as Enter Sandman, what a great year for riffs. This next riff might be the heaviest on this list. I'm gonna actually have to prep for this one. 
So just move back a bit, please. Move back. Written about revolution against racism and authority, Killing in the Name is widely recognized as Rage Against the Machine's signature song. A powerful message needs a powerful riff, and oh boy, this riff delivers. The groove of this riff is unmatched. You could say it's the riffiest riff to ever riff. You're welcome, Matt. It's at a medium tempo and swings pretty hard. It's perfect to start getting your groove on. You made it to Y2K. <laughs> All right, you've made it to Y2K. To open this decade up, I wanted to start with a riff that played a huge part in mainstream hip hop. This riff is the lead single from the movie Eight Mile. It actually won Eminem an Academy Award for Best Original Song, making it the first hip hop track to receive the award. Huge riff right here. This riff is based off the power chord, which really sets us up nicely for the next riff. It also has palm muting in it, which is when you mute the strings with your palm on your right hand. As promised, this next song features the power chord, but not until 53 seconds in. What a payoff. Released in 2003, Seven Nation Army has served as a theme song for sports teams, personalities, and events, including the FIFA 2018 World Cup. It played a significant role in the White Stripes' popularity, with Rolling Stone describing it as a career-changing hit. Learning this riff will help you begin to move the power chord shape around the neck. Practicing it slowly is going to build a great foundation for you to start learning more complex rock songs that also use power chords. Are we in the 2010s already? Man, time flies. This riff is from the Arctic Monkeys 2013 song, Do I Wanna Know. In 2019, this song was ranked number three on Guitar World's best riffs of the decade. This is one of those riffs that's instantly recognizable after the first few notes. I really like how there's a clean guitar pan to the left and a dirty guitar pan to the right. It makes this song sound really, really wide. It's a slow tempo riff that's approachable for most beginner players. It also plays for a majority of the track, so it's great to play along with. All right, last one. For some reason, I had never heard of this song before, but I love the Foo Fighters, and this riff is so groovy that it had to make this list. <laughs> Foo Fighters released Rope in 2011. It features complex rhythms and angular chords and really speaks to a Rush or Led Zeppelin influence. It was even remixed by Deadmau5. Talk about breaking genre barriers. This riff might be a tad difficult for beginners, but it's one to aim for after you practice the rest of the riffs from this video. It'll get your alternate picking lined up and it definitely helps to work out your timing, especially if you start practicing it at a slow tempo. I just noticed that most of these riffs were released at the beginning of their decade. Coincidence? Or... Let me know which one's your favorite or which ones I forgot in the comments below. I'm sure I angered a lot of people by forgetting to put their favorite riff in, so guitar fight. Yeah, it's, you just fight with the guitar and you know? Mom spaghetti. Mom spaghetti. <laughs> Should I do that? Getting old, can't keep up with the times. <laughs>